do not know exactly where Ilon Moret, the oak of the teacher, originally was. It is about 4,000 years ago, but it must have been somewhere around in these mountains where the Lord appeared to Abram and said, to your seed, I will give exactly this land. There, Abram built an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him, who had shown himself to him. If you remember back to Genesis 11 in Babylon, it had been said that the people there said to each other, let us build a city for ourselves. Abram now, in stark contrast, totally different, builds an altar for the Lord. Not for himself, for the Lord. This, it was actually the first real deed, the first building he erected here in the promised land. Now, why did he build an altar? This is not an altar. This is just a heap of stones for tourist reasons. But I thought it helps you to imagine a little bit what might have happened here. Why did he build an altar? To establish a relationship with God? To say, please, Lord, talk to me. Let me see something of you. Do something for me. If you read the Bible, you will observe that there is hardly any altar that has been built in order to establish a relationship with God. The rabbis say that this altar had been built as a reaction to the gospel of the seed and the gospel of of the land. Psora in Hebrew is best being translated as gospel. In that sense, we as Christians have to understand that the altar is not a substitute for the liberating gospel, but rather a reaction to it. We think that the gospel replaces the altar. And now we have the gospel. We don't need the altar anymore. We have to see that the biblical testimony tells us that the altar always is a reaction to good news. And uh, this was actually Abram's altar here in this area was the second altar that had been built in the Bible. The first altar was Noah's altar after the great flood. And if you remember correctly, you will also see that there it was a reaction to God's sal salvation, to his saving deed to Noah and his family, that Noah says, now I have to build an altar. He did not come and say, I want to be saved. So where do I build an altar so God can save me? Do you understand what the difference is between a pagan understanding of an altar and sacrifices and a biblical understanding? If somebody comes to me and says, how can Jews be reconciled to God? How can they sleep well at night if they don't have a temple and if they don't have altars and if they can't bring sacrifices? I at once, I don't even have to ask. I know that a non-Jew, a Gentile is asking me. A Jew would never ask that question. If he's rooted in Bible, he knows that we don't have a temple, we don't have an altar, not because we don't have a relationship with God, but because our relationship with God is not good enough, so we may have an altar, we may have a temple. Both with Noah and with Abram, it were sacrifices of thanks and a reaction to good news, a reaction to the God 
who allowed Abraham to see himself. The altar actually is the symbol of the presence of the Holy God. Abraham's first altar is his amen to God's revealing himself and a protest, and that's now a second function, a protest against the Canaanite landmarks. He hoisted here in this area that was full of pagans, he hoisted the flag of the one and true living God. And actually all three patriarchs built altars, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Jacob's altar was down there in Shechem, which is today called Nablus. In that way, Abraham gave an example to the people of Israel. And actually, as father of our faith, he shows us the biblical understanding of an altar. And yes, it is true, an altar is to be used as a sacrificial place. Actually, this biblical understanding has never ever changed. There isn't an Old Testament understanding of sacrifices and a New Testament understanding. There's a biblical understanding and a pagan understanding. And the biblical understanding is that as a reaction to good news, we human beings build an altar to thank God, to show His presence in the world and to proclaim to the world what He has done to us. And listen exactly, that's the reason why the Apostle Paul asks his readers in Rome, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of the one true and living God, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to the one God. Do you see? We are also, like Abraham, called to answer the gospel, the good news, the promises God has given to us with a sacrifice, with an altar.